Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the, of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. In God. Let us pray. Let us pray. O, God, o God, who through, who through your, your Son bestowed, bestowed upon, upon the faithful the, faithful, the fire, fire of your glory, of your glory. Sanctify, sanctify this new this fire, new we, fire pray. we pray, and grant, and grant that, that by these Paschal, Paschal celebrations, celebrations we may be, we may so, be so inflamed with heavenly, with heavenly desires, desires that with minds, with minds made, pure, made pure, we may attain we may festivities, festivities of unending an splendor, an splendor through Christ, through Christ our, our Lord. Amen. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. All time, All time belongs, belongs to him and all, all the ages. To him be to glory him be and glory power and through power every, every age and forever. And forever. Amen. Amen. By his By holy his and glorious, glorious wounds, wounds, may Christ, Christ the Lord, the Lord guard, guard us, us and protect, and protect us. us. Amen. May the light of Christ, Christ rising and free, dispel the darkness, darkness of our hearts and minds. Deacon Doyle, Deacon Doyle will now begin our procession with the Christ candle into the church entranceway, where the host team will light your tapers. For kids going to slam, please follow Miss Kelsey. Light of
light of Christ. prison. 
in voice of death and rose victorious from the underworld. O wonder of your humble care for us, O love, O charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave you gave away your only son. O truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer, the sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes fault away from, and restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to mourners. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth and divine to human. On this, your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of bees and your servants evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the light of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets. Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us now listen with quiet hearts to the Word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved His people, and in these the last days has sent us His Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. You may now blow out your candles and be seated for the first reading. reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth and every free tree that is seed-bearing fruit on it, to be your food, and to all the animals of the land, 
all the birds of the air and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground. I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made and found it very good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. stand and pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever Amen. Please be seated for the second reading. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you, lift up your staff, and with the hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go in after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God who had been leading the Israel's camp, now moved and went around behind them. The column of cloud, also leaving the front, took up its place behind them, so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer together all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night, and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them, right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian horse a glance that threw it into a panic. And so he clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel 
because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head-on toward the sea when the Lord hurled them into the midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. But the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand and pray. O God, whose ancient wonders remained undimmed in splendor even in our day, for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand, now you bring about as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth. Grant, we pray, that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, all you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come, receive grain and eat. Come without pain, without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what fails to satisfy? Heed me and you shall eat well. 
you shall delight in rich fare. Come to me heedfully, listen, that you may have life. I will renew with you the everlasting covenant, the benefits assured to David. As I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander of nations, so shall you summon a nation you knew not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high shall my ways be above your ways and my thoughts above your thoughts. For just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. My word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand and pray. Almighty and ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue through Christ our Lord. Amen.
let us pray. O God, who make this most sacred night radiant with the glory of Christ's resurrection, stir up in your chart, a, stir up in your church a spirit of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the epistle. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in the newness of life. For if we have grown into a union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and giving and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early when the sun had risen, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young, a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised, he is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, happy Easter, everybody. 
want to welcome those of you here in person as well as all of you joining us online. And a special welcome to any visitors or guests who've joined us. We're really glad that you're here and spending part of your holiday weekend with us. In 1938, Nicholas Winton was a London stockbroker. He had a good job and a, a very comfortable lifestyle, far removed from the crisis unfolding in Europe. But when a friend of his traveled to Prague to help refugees who had been displaced by Adolf Hitler's invasion, Nicholas knew that he also had to act. On his first visit to Prague, he met so many individuals who were suffering. They were homeless and hungry. They were sick and dying. Returning home, Winton told his friends, I can't unsee what I saw. I have to do something. His something resulted in transporting eight trainloads of children, mostly Jewish, from Czechoslovakia to England. Nearly 700 were saved before the Nazis closed the border. For 50 years, Nicholas never spoke about his deeds, but then the story got out and his efforts were recognized. And his life is the subject of a new movie starring Anthony Hopkins titled One Life. Because of Nicky Winton, not only did 700 children survive, but so did their descendants, estimated to be over 6,000 people. The title of the movie, One Life, has more than one meaning. It doesn't just refer to Nicholas Winton, but to each individual person he saved. And yet, for the rest of his life, he was haunted by memories of a young girl whose photograph he took on his very first visit to a refugee camp. Did she survive? Was she saved? He agonized over her and so many others, believing he could have done more. But there's a great quote in the movie spoken by Nikki's friend. He told him this, save one life, save the world. Save one life, save the world. It's a powerful quote that can inspire the Nikki Wintons of the world. It says that one person's life can make a difference. It also says that every single life matters, that everyone deserves to be saved. And these are deep spiritual truths which we celebrate today. When God raised his son from the dead, Christ saved the world. He saved you, and he saved me. His one life made all of the difference for all of time. That's what we celebrate on Easter. And today we're beginning our Easter message series titled, Because He Lives. Christ's resurrection from the dead revealed to humanity a way out of the suffering and death facing us a path forward from the misery and pain which so many people face every day. Because he lives, it is possible for us to go from being fearful to courageous, from doubting to hopeful, from questioning to certain about who we are and where we are headed, to be filled with joy and faith, which can empower us to keep going when all seems lost. So let's get started. Now in the scripture readings for this series, we're gonna meet a wide range of individuals, a whole cast of characters. Some were close friends of Jesus, others were sworn enemies. Each of them was changed because of what happened on Easter. But the individual who I think should most amaze us is Peter. The New Testament paints a rich portrait of St. Peter. He's someone I would describe as an all-or-nothing kind of guy. In his first encounter with Jesus by the Sea of Galilee, he left everything to become an apostle. He heard every parable and sermon. 
he witnessed every miracle in healing, from curing lepers to raising the dead. Peter walked on water with Jesus, and then was the first to profess Jesus as the Messiah. This led Jesus to declare that he would build his church on the rock of Peter's faith. Peter was present for every key moment of Jesus' ministry, including the transfiguration. At the Last Supper on Holy Thursday, Peter received the Eucharist for the first time, then had his feet washed by Jesus. Peter followed Jesus into the Garden of Gethsemane, where he promptly fell asleep, only to be awakened by a mob who had come to arrest Jesus. Peter then drew his sword, trying to defend Jesus, inadvertently cutting off the ear of a bystander. He tried to stay near while Jesus was questioned by the Jewish leaders, but then he got so scared when he was recognized that he denied knowing Jesus not once but three times, exactly as Jesus predicted. And then Peter spent the next three days hiding with the other apostles as his best friend was tortured, crucified, died, and was buried. If you put yourself in Peter's shoes, it's not hard to imagine the thoughts that might have gone through his mind in those three lost days. Thoughts like, did I just waste three years of my life following the wrong leader? The Messiah wasn't supposed to die a criminal's death. I'm certain he was overwhelmed by feelings of guilt, by abandoning his best friend in his hour of need, and probably some self-loathing for not being more courageous, for being more concerned about saving his own neck than standing by Jesus. That's the Peter we know before Easter Sunday. Then suddenly, Peter was transformed. He became a bold, courageous, eloquent, and fiery preacher for Christ and the gospel. What changed? How was this possible? The answer is Easter. Something absolutely groundbreaking and earth-shaking. Something never seen before or since. When Peter encountered the risen Christ on Easter, here are some truths that became clear to him. One, God became one of us and lived among us for three years. Two, that same God suffered and died for us. And three, God raised Jesus from the dead and he appeared to his disciples. This is what changed Peter. This is what transformed him from fearful to courageous, from doubting to faith-filled, from selfish to selfless, from questioning to rock-solid in his faith. And here's the really big news of Easter. If Peter could change, so can we. If Peter can change, so can we. See, God has a vision for our lives, for you and for me. God wants us to go from death to life, not just after we die, but right now, today. So let me ask you, where in your life do you need resurrection? Where in your life do you need resurrection? Is there something that you're struggling with that you've given up even hoping could ever change? Something you've just thrown in the towel on? Is there a relationship that was once loving and vibrant that's now feels lifeless and dead? Is there a dream you've stopped pursuing or let die? Where in your life do you need God to enter in and rescue you? Where in your life do you need resurrection this Easter? Identify what that is. Name it. Picture it. Then believe, trust, and have hope. Ask God to give you the faith of Peter. Ask God to do great things for you. We can and should expect change, growth, and healing in our lives. Decline and accepting the status quo 
is not what God wants or who God is. If God has the power to raise Jesus and transform the lives of his followers, why not expect that God can heal any situation in your life? Where in your life do you need resurrection? Today and in this coming week, take some time each day to reflect on this question. Meditate on it. Pray about it. And next weekend after Mass, members of our prayer ministry will be available to pray with anyone who has a particular need or who is facing any challenge. So please join us next weekend and each week of this series as we continue our celebration of Easter and discover all the ways that life can be different for us because he lives. Amen. We will now have the blessing of water and renewal of baptismal promises. O God, who by invisible power accomplished a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water your creation to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters, so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration, so that the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people set free from slavery by Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son baptized in the waters of the Jordan was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection, commanded his disciples, go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of old, may be found worthy to rise to the life of the newborn through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into this water, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please stand for the renewal of baptismal promises. Our servers and host team will relight your candles. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and all his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you to respond 
loudly and proudly with the words I do to each of these questions. Do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please extinguish your candles. We will now have our prayer of the faithful. On Easter, we celebrate Christ's victory over sin and death. Because he lives, we too have freedom and new life. Let us now share these needs and intentions. For the leaders of Christ's church, 
May God fill them with faith, devotion, and Easter joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our troubled world, still awaiting the full victory which Jesus won, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us celebrating in this Easter season, may our renewal of faith inspire us to share the good news of Christ with everyone we meet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of those battling addiction or suffering in body, mind, or spirit, may they be comforted through the aid of compassionate caregivers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died and await the fullness of resurrection, especially, the, especially those we remember in this weekend's Masses, for Arthur McClelland, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the personal needs written in our parish prayer book and all of the intentions we now voice to God in the quiet of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of the living and the dead, because Jesus lives, we can offer you these intentions trusting that you will hear and answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. I believe in the sun. I believe song 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this night above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, 
Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Pius X, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, the power and the glory, glory are, are yours, yours now, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into
Let us stand and pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, happy Easter. It's good to say that, isn't it? Oh, it's so good to say that. <laughs> well, I'm Katie Skirpon. And I'm Jen Buter, and we'd like to welcome all of you and thank you so much for worshiping here with us tonight. And we'd also like to make sure that we invite you back next weekend as we continue our Easter series, Because He Lives. Now, as Father Mike mentioned, there's going to be an opportunity for you to bring your intentions to our prayer team and to pray with them one-on-one. -on -one. So take some time this week, really think and reflect on what you need God to be doing in your life, what needs to be resurrected. You know, Easter, at Easter, we know that we have a chance to welcome so many visitors and guests here at our church. So if this is your first time here, your first time in a while, welcome. We are so glad that you are here. And we'd love to stay connected. In each of your pews, you'll find a blue Connect card, and we'd love if you would take just a minute, if you're a visitor or guest, to fill this out. You can hand it to a member of our host team, or you can hand it to us at the photo booth, and we'll make sure to let you know all the great things happening here at St. Pius. And if you're joining us at SPX Online, if you could just hit the I'm New button at the top of your page, I promise we'll get all your information and get in contact with you this week. Katie, doesn't everybody look so good in their Easter outfits tonight? Very, very nice. And as a mom, I know some of these kids didn't get into their Easter finery willingly, so bravo. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So what we want to do then is get that great Easter family picture. So we're inviting you to meet us in the entranceway at the photo booth so that we can snap that one for you this Easter. So. Please come back next weekend as we continue our Easter message series, Because He Lives, especially with our prayer ministry, and stop by the photo booth on your way out of Mass. From St. Pius to you and yours, Happy, happy Easter. Easter. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Let the church say amen. 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 And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten son endow you with the prize of immortality. Let the church say amen. 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 Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Let the church say amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.
is risen today. He's Professional squisher. <laughs> <laughs> 